Hey everyone, and good morning. Welcome back to BMX News, a live BMX news show where at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time every Friday, I talk about everything that happened in the previous week within the world of BMX that I think you guys might care about. With that being said, we're live right now and we have a ton of people in the chat. Such an awesome conversation going on in this community today. The scene's not dead. Noah McBride is first in the chat. Travis Schramm, Travis K. We've got Chief. We have, uh, who else is in here? Huck Karinsky, a member in the chat. Thank you for the support there. Uh, who else is in here? Man, there's been such a long conversation between just those three for a while now. Kevin Jackson is here. Anarcho-capitalista. <laughs> Thank you for being here. So with that being said, first thing that we have to talk about this week is that I have finally opened up my own storefront online that is actually done by me. The first run of shirts that is in the storefront is the bike rider tee that you are seeing right here. This is a shirt that I designed for a signature shirt with Nowhere BMX years ago. And with Carl Hinckley's blessing, I have re-released it. So I have a pre-order up. It's linked in the description. I will also pin the product because I can do that now. 21st century technology is great. So if you've ever thought about supporting the channel in some way, this is a good way that you could do it and get something in return. All of these shirts are going to be screen printed here in Ohio by a fellow BMX rider down in Hamilton basement printing. Uh, these are, oh, Travis, secrets. All you got to do is click right, right here and you can see. Anyways, though, uh, I'll be shipping them out myself. I think I'm going to have some to bring to Cornhucket potentially. I just got to work on getting them from the screen printer first. So with that being said, check that out. It's linked in the description down below. And thank you for being here to support and just watching. And if you've ever thought about doing more, this is a potential way to do it. So moving on from there, the first thing that I really want to talk about this week is uh, bike shops in BMX. So Dead Sailor BMX, a bike shop in the UK, posted a picture on Facebook and there's, oh, you can't see it. Good. Okay. <laughs> but uh, they posted this picture saying running a BMX shop is hard. The struggle between making money and the love of BMX can tear you apart. It's a business. I've been saying this about things for a long time, but it is a business. You got to pay bills and you got to pay back loans. You got to buy your stock. You got to market the crap out of it and all with the smallest margins on the stuff you sell. Then you add in all the local dudes who you chuck off 10% here and there. You price match one of the big players because you want to get that guy stoked and you're left with the crumbs, but you do it. You do it because you love BMX, then the bottom falls out of the world. Pandemic, war, soaring energy costs, global warming, chuck it on the pile, man. Overstocked and underselling, suppliers cutting you off because you are late paying invoices, and wild discounting that you can't compete with. If you continue on the same path, you'll run the shop and your mental health into the ground. Time for a change. So there's more written over here behind me. Dead Sailor isn't going to be closing, but the shop hours are getting cut to Monday, Friday, and Saturday. And uh, they'll be focusing more on the brand like new DS. I My brain's skipping. I don't know what DS is. Fresh clothing and maybe even a frame or two. So they're not going to be, I think it said something about not selling stuff that isn't in the shop. And I wanted to talk about this because been saying for a while now that things are going to shift with BMX shops and, and local bike shops and the way that they do things because of the buying online era that we live in in the world today. And we're seeing it. We're also seeing it in that uh, one of my buddies, Jay, who worked at QBP for, I think he said 24 years in his post on Facebook, he was laid off by QBP. And we're just seeing more and more of these things. And with 
people not buying from bike shops as much, that means distributors aren't needed as much. And it's kind of shifting the way things are working in BMX. So you see companies working directly with bike shops because in the day and age that we are in the internet, like a distributor can be a good thing if you are huge, you know, like QBP or the other distributors out there that have just like an insane amount of products that a bike shop can go to them and get anything they could possibly need. But in the age of the internet, that's not as necessary because in the BMX world, oh, we can go directly to the company and have things sent to us from the company without having to pay the markup from the distributor. And then the bike shops make more money that way. And that leads to the topic of when companies sell direct, they make even more that way because they're not going to the distributor, then the bike shop, then the customer. They're going straight from the manufacturer to them to the customer so they make more money that way and it's just kind of the way of the world and we're seeing people shift the way things work and navigate the way or navigate the waters that are the bmx industry and the bicycling industry i don't think that bike shops are ever going to completely disappear because there's always going to be people who need their bikes fixed the maintenance side of things is always going to be necessary because there will always be people who don't want to work on their own bikes, whether it's outside of BMX or within BMX, there are people that just would rather pay a bike shop to work on their bikes. So, so I don't think that bike shops are ever going to completely go away, but I think that the way that they do things is going to shift moving forward. And I hope that there is the adaptation necessary to keep them fully alive and going. It's just, it's the way things are today and it's a tough situation for those guys and I hope that it works out. And it's just one of those situations where as a bike company, I, I think I would, I would, I would, I'd love to see everybody make it. I'd love to see the shops, the companies, distributors everybody be able to make it but in the times that we're in right now it sucks that companies have to look out for themselves more than the bike shops and the distributors because they need to stay alive to make the parts to sell them without the companies there can't be bike shops selling parts or working on bikes because there's no parts to work on on the bikes and no parts to sell so all of that being said this is unfortunate but I'm glad to see that the adaptation is at least happening for Dead Sailor and that they're keeping things moving. And I think that in the, the time period we're in, in the age of the internet, there is always a way to make things happen. Whether you might have to change the way you do things a little bit, even that's going to be the reality of it. But changing the way you do things is better than closing completely because you refuse to change the way you do things. So that's where I'm going to leave that. I hope that all of this works out and the people at these smaller bike shops and BMX shops can make things work moving forward in the unfortunate circumstances that are the way the world is. We all know that the world sucks sometimes. So moving on from there, I'm going to be bringing up the Cornhucket Flyer every Friday until it happens. The Nowhere BMX 10th Annual Cornhucket Jam is going down September 24th. So you can show up at this address. You're allowed to camp. Just hit up Carl at Nowhere beforehand. Head out there. You can get there Friday, camp for the jam Saturday, camp Saturday night, and leave Sunday. But yeah, it's an amazing time. It's going to be an amazing jam. So make sure you get out there it's right smack in the middle of the country and there's going to be a lot of people there it's going to be an amazing time and the way it's looking i might actually have some of those shirts that i showed to sell so moving on from there let's talk about nora cup 2022 we have the transition rider of the year nominees that is alex heim dennis anderson josh dovey kevin peraza and logan martin if josh dove doesn't win i'm gonna burn everything to the ground because josh dove all those riders on that list are great but josh dove rides a ramp in a transition better than all of them 
at almost half their age. It's incredible. Moving on from there, let's talk about the video part of the year nominees, which I don't know if this is because Nora Cup is essentially a giant popularity contest or what, but literally Alex Heim, Dennis Anderson, Kevin Peraza are all also on this list. Also with Lewis Mills and Trey Jones. I'm going to say right now, Trey Jones, no fun video should win. And I also thought it was ironic that none of these video parts are video parts from a full length video. I don't believe. I know that Dennis's video was just an online video. Kevin's was an online. Pretty sure Lewis Mills, Trey Jones obviously was an online video. I forget about Alex's. But I do find it a little funny that Alex Heim, Dennis Anderson, and Kevin Peraza are all three nominated in the whole wide world of BMX that we live in. We have three of the same people up for transition and video part of the year, especially when, you know, uh, never mind. I don't know what I was saying there. I got confused a little bit. Either way. It's a little weird, and I mean, there's no denying that Nora Cup is a popularity contest when it's voted on by BMX riders within the industry of BMX. That's literally the definition of it, but it's a cool thing, and I don't really, I don't know, it doesn't bother me that it's a popularity contest because it's cool to see what everyone thinks every year and who people vote to be the number one rider award. Maybe, maybe after it's all over, we could do like the uh, objective Nora Cup, where it's it's based on objectives and not a subjective vote. That could be funny. So moving on from there, let's get into the videos from this week. First up, we've got a quick trailer for Tear the Club Up. So this is a full-length video from Down Under, aka Australia, produced by Troy Charlesworth. Quick trailer for it. Check it out if you want to. Then we've got Jaden Fuller shredding the Eleonora Skate Park from Colony BMX. Lots of high flying skate park riding. Moving on from here, we've got Colt Cruisin Duarte. And the description on BMX Union had me all sorts of confused. Said that we thought this was a fresh video from Macon Duarte, who rides for Colt, but actually it's some of the team cruising Duarte Park, a skate park, and some street spots. Had me all sorts of confused last night when I was writing these up but it's a cruising video riding duarte i don't know if macon duarte is in this video but it would be cool if he was so moving on from there we've got a throwback to 2001 and jerry bagley's easy style section from the mosh video this one is rad all different types of riding in here dirt trails street and i think a lot of you guys might remember this video from when it actually came out. What do we got going on in the chat here? What do we have? Neo Cup, Northeast Ohio, a spoof of the Nora Cup. Actually working on something like that for BMX this year, Huck. That is sick. I'm looking forward to that, Noah. Keep me in the loop. Next up, we got a video from Animal and Hamilton, Stephen Hamilton to be exact, called More Light. In this video, Rules. If there's one video that you guys watch this week, let it be this one because Hamilton absolutely rips. Let's just see. There's so many awesome clips in here. Let's just see if we can find one good one here. See that? Like most people aren't going to, you know, wall slap to wall or wally to wall ride on something. The skill that it takes to do the types of things that Hamilton does is so obvious in his riding and the style that he does it with is sick so moving on from there we've got the bloom bmx women's weekend in the woods 2022 at i believe caddy woods yeah caddy woods in pennsylvania unless it's both it doesn't say specifically either way this is a great video with lots of checking in with riders and riding and just a great vibe all together. The Bloom has seriously been stepping up and putting in the work to make things happen and grow. And it's it's been pretty cool to watch happen. And 
the quality of things is just getting better and better. So if you're a fan of the Lady Shredders, this is the one to check out this week. Next up, we got Corey Walsh, Repentance. Another video. Okay, if there's two videos you got to watch this week, this is the other one. Corey Walsh is wild. That's all. I mean, you can click through any part of this video and see something completely insane. The dude just pulled off of a freaking capsule out of the capsule for one, but also did that table at the same time. This video is insane, worth watching, and it almost felt like something like out of props or something like that. Such a crazy, crazy video. Moving on from there, we've got Lux BMX and their crew shredding the Gold Coast. The videos are getting longer as we're going here, so if you want something longer to watch, these are the ones to start checking out. Corey Walsh's video is seven minutes long as well. Then we've got Stress Wolfpack 4 Street Jam. So this says 10 minutes of highlights, largest street event, Wolfpack 4. So check this one out if you want to see something that's not from the U.S. Then we've got more people of the fast and loose other than just Corey Walsh in the Live Fast full video. This one's over 20 minutes long. Features Corey Walsh, Trey Jones, Jason Watts, Dennis Anderson, Gary Young, Chris Fox, and Matt Cordova. It's more of freaking stuff just like Corey Walsh's video these guys hauling ass and going as high as you can possibly go as fast as you can do it and you already know so just watch this one you know it's going to be entertaining and if you want a longer one it's one to check out then we got Federal Bikes Brussels so this one features Bruno Hoffman Boyd Hilder Joe Jarvis Dan Lacey Jackman Hines and I don't a name I'm not going to butcher so this one is over 20 minutes as well and these guys are riding in the streets. So you had the last video that was more transition going fast and high at skate parks. And then this one, which is, you know, street riding. So it's cool to have the variety in longer videos. I mean, it's over 20 minutes long. So you got two different options there of longer videos to watch. And then we've got the in the cut video from Dig on the kink in Lion. Lion, sorry lion video that came out there's a lot of very amazing writing in this one and this is basically the raw cut of it and the in the cut from dig so another longer video over 21 minutes for this one so it's some stuff we probably have already seen but you see the behind the scenes and more behind it so moving on from there we've got one interview i guess i can't really call this an interview I put it in this section before I actually clicked on it. It's a bike check with Benny Gonzalez, but it's literally just the list of parts and the links to those parts. So it's not an interview, but it's a bike check. So you can check that one out. So many checks being said, if you want to, from Benny. And one more reminder, the uh, storefront is up and I'm working on some other things to get in here. Got a couple things that I'm in that I have in the works. I'm probably going to be making up some stickers. I'm going to try and make some today, and I'll get those listed as soon as I possibly can. Get some Lip Lord stickers in here. If you have an idea for something that I could potentially do as a frame sticker, that would go like on the down tube or top tube of a frame, that isn't my name. Let me know. I'm blanking on that one, and I would love to do it. Hoodies could come in the future, but. I can't have too much stock of like t-shirt type stuff because they're expensive to get a ton of them and I I just can't afford to do that yet. We're working on it though. We're going to make it happen and we're going to get there. So that being said, yo, Huck Karinsky just ordered a couple of shirts. Thank you. And if you're local to me, before you order off here and pay shipping, let me know because I can just... You know, you can pay me and I can give them to you rather than having to pay shipping. So on that note, thank you everyone in here for the support. There's 17 people in here live on a Friday morning for BMX News, which is pretty friggin' sick. I really enjoy doing these. Next week, I 
think I'll be able to do a live news. I'm not going to be in Ohio, so I'll try to do a live news, but we're going to make something happen regardless. It just might not be the same production level as this. So thank you guys for tuning in, and thank you to everyone for the support on any kind of shirts or watching or anything that you do that helps me out. I really appreciate it. So we'll see you.